one that really jumped out to me on the NFL Top 100 was Richard Sherman at 28. Um, I don't know when when he signed his contract. If you had told anybody outside of him that uh, in the NFL Top 100 list in 2020 he'd be a top 30 player. And to your point, you could argue, oh, well, it doesn't really matter. But I do think you look at this list, by and large, it's just the best players in the NFL are on the list. Now, we could argue that Derrick Henry shouldn't be so high or Todd Gurley shouldn't be so high, whatever. But I, this, to me, not just from a Niners standpoint, but just from an NFL standpoint, I think that was one of the most significant rankings on this list is Richard Sherman at 28. And this kind of next level that he's had on his career when people wondered if any team wanted him and if his career was over. Well, if I would have told you that night, I think Marcus Thompson broke the story. Kyle Shanahan was having dinner with Richard Sherman. Kyle Shanahan, his wife, Richard Sherman, his wife, out to dinner. And Richard Sherman had just been cut. It was not like if you were going, was Richard Sherman trending up or down? You would have been like, at best neutral, probably arrow pointing down. If I told you every GM in the league, you could give them one piece of information. Say what you want about this information. In two years, he will be 28th, you know, on the top 100. He will be back as a top 30 player in the league. That's where the peers vote him. Just that's all the information you know. Wouldn't you say the majority of teams, especially all the good teams, would have been all over Richard Sherman? Yeah. Do you remember the reaction, John, when it was reported that he had a contract bonus tied to being a pro bowler? People were like, oh. Well, Florio and Joe Thomas. This guy going to be a pro bowler? How is this guy going to be a pro bowler? Yeah, you're, you, they called him an idiot. He's the third DB on this list. He and, hit every incentive. And and Jamal Adams is a safety, so the only other corner ahead of him, the only corner ahead of him was Stephon Gilmore. I would imagine, and hopefully we do one day, like non-corona can just sit down with Richard. People thought it was nuts for the incentives because just like in anything in life, if his incentives when we're talking pro athletes are much higher, but if we just use basic numbers, a hundred grand, and so instead of taking – you know, maybe 150 grand, you take 100 grand with incentives that can get you to 400 grand. I think that that feel kind of unrealistic sales incentives. A lot of people would probably say, well, instead of taking the 100 with all the incentives to get to 400, you're never going to make the 400. Fight to get 180 in guaranteed money, right? And I bet Richard would say that motivation for me. I'm a crazy motherfucker. I am not wired like your typical athlete. I am on, like we talk about Mahomes and Jordan, like Richard's in that, like Richard's an all-time motivational, he, I mean, he's just up there, right? I mean, he's, I bet he thought about that stuff daily, the rehab, the grind, the drive, and then knowing like, I know this, this defense is my baby. I've been running this thing since I've been in the league. And I wonder if the contract kind of motivated him. Now, would he have been as good? Because remember one of the things was like Patricia, Matt Patricia and Bob Quinn are on the phone. Will he sign with the Lions? And at the time, the Niners sucked. So it wasn't like if they were offering way more money, it we see it, it wouldn't have been that crazy if I would have told you Richard Sherman. It would have been, it seems crazy now. Went to the Lions for double the money or something, right? Because the Niners weren't guaranteeing any money really beside that first year. Yeah. I mean, part of the question we'd have to ask him is and I know he's been asked this question, but why did this make so much more sense to you? Like, if Steve Kerr signs 5 for 25 with the New York Knicks instead of the Golden State Warriors, first of all, he's not the coach. He's not an NBA coach right now. And secondly, no one's talking about an extension, let alone him being worth that money, right? And I think you and I talk about this a lot, not just in sports, but just in our own lives and in business. If you can't afford to put yourself in a better situation for less money up front for the potential of a larger gain in the end, that's the move that is hard to make but really gives you the most upside. In other words, maybe that same contract in Detroit, and this is, I think, what you're saying, maybe he doesn't look like he's worth that money if he ends up on the Lions. I, I but think part I, of the wisdom is knowing where you put yourself to set yourself up in the best possible I, I, manner. I think any human that is ever in that situation, when your gut tells you to do the right thing and it's going to cost you money, unless it's costing, like, you literally can't feed your family, and there are clearly situations, like I turn on Last Chance You, people in dire situations that don't have a choice. But if you have any semblance of a choice, now it might mean your lifestyle might have, for us normal people in society, like Richard's decision was ultimately over, he was already really rich. But there was legacy, I mean, we're talking about an all-time great player. I give him credit because we see it all the time in pro sports. Guys just make dumb, you signed with who? You're doing what? 
You know, it's like Nick Foles signs all that money with the Jaguars. It made sense. Like, no one was offering that much money. It was historic money. I don't think any, everyone's like, well, how can that was a no-brainer, right? <laughs> no-brainer there. And then there are sometimes guys that just go to a shitty team. You're like, why are you doing this? Like, you're going to hate it. You're going to be miserable. And I think I give Richard credit. I, I give the Niners credit for having just legitimate conversation. I think it really helps that I, I saw Richard retweeted this the other day, like, highest earners – any school per capita or like Stanford grads. I mean, of course they are, but it's like, he's a really smart guy. Did you? And I, I just, you know, now guy in a million years, if you said by year two, he's going to be a second team, all pro, I would have, I would have pushed back. I wouldn't have believed that. I don't think that the Niners probably didn't think this was coming. I don't know. Maybe we would have a had second him. team, all pro guy I know. who any he, team could have signed. I, I, he has solidified his hall of fame candidacy. I think, yeah, he's a right. he's a one hundred percent lock Hall of Famer. And I think maybe he probably was a Hall of Famer anyway. But You're just talking after Seattle. Yeah, I I think this second act is just whoa. He and he, I feel he feels like There's from no the Hall way. of Fame voters, he played a big role in helping the Niners change. No doubt. I think we felt that way. Remember, we went out to an early OTA when he was there before he was even healthy, and I was like, this guy's obviously bringing something to the table here. If he can just be, we, th we thought if he's just solid enough to play, his leadership's going to be really valuable. And then he was better than solid enough. What was the, did you have a PFF stat or something you're telling me about before? Yeah. in his career, this is pretty, I mean, just eye opening. He's allowed 17 touchdowns, okay. 17 touchdowns total. He has 39 picks. Wow. Like that's to me, like a Revis Dion type. That's, I mean, wow. <laughs> that's, Honestly, I had to do a double take. Here's the other thing. And picks don't count, you know, just end zone PBUs, he, he, Crabtree, sorry, receiver. Yeah, talking about John Lynch and the Niners just rebuilding this team. They had five guys on the top 100. Only one of them was the first-round pick, was Nick Bosa. You know, you look at Fred Warner, 70th, third-round pick, who's become just a staple. I saw Richard retweeted, like, this. congrats to this guy. He's got many more coming. Like, Fred Warner's good. Jimmy Garoppolo, they got their quarterback for a second-round pick. Richard, they got on an unguaranteed, incentivized deal coming off an Achilles. And their best player is a fifth-round pick. Like, that's, to me, that's pretty impressive, it is. right? Because when you look at the top, you know, 10 players, for example, you go Lamar, he was a first-round pick. Mahomes, first-round pick. Russell. But did you just, see what Feldman tweeted, Bruce Feldman tweeted? Uh, no. I, of the yeah, top. Good night. Of the top five players on the list, Lamar, Russell, Donald, Mahomes, Michael Thomas. None of them was a big star. All five of star them guy. were at one point in time three-star recruits. Yeah. Well, I, I'm a huge believer guy, and uh, social media can be really negative, and like it's all about where you, where you start. Is just I I I have no I, by the day. I'm now. I'm not saying that growing up in a normal home is better than a broken home in the hood. Like you, you there's, it can help you out, but in, it's been proven in sports in life. I mean, Joe Lake grew up in the fucking gutter. I mean, he did, don't even take his kids back to Boston. He hates where he grew up so much with nothing. Like you do get to determine now, again, these guys, there's a physical level of talent. You have to be God given to get to pro sports. But I, I, I think that's a great example. Cause when I say, when you say Michael Tom, now he went to Ohio state, he I might have become see, and and the wording there was at one point he might have become a four star. I'm not sure, yeah. but but I think you can look at the other guys. Like I think this is where I do respect Lamar, Russell, Mahomes. Like they were not viewed as like Alabama was not knocking down their door. Nah, he was three star, Six and even four, Aaron like two hundred pounds not, out of Southern California. He was a three star. Aaron Donald did not go to LSU. Right, went to fucking Pitt. Yeah, like it just I. Football probably more than the other sports. Like there are just way more Steph Curry's in the NFL than there are in the NBA, right? That's what's you kind of unique about the Warriors. Really, their most heralded guys. Basketball is basketball is just cuts such a hard line over short guys. It's so hard to be a sh short air quote. Yeah, just like the top ten players in the NBA were typically sweet at seventeen, right? It's like in the league so early. Yeah, like oh Kyrie Irving, he just he made it happen. Yeah, he was the number one recruit like in his sophomore year in high school. Right. Yeah. Or Jason Tatum. Yeah. He went to Duke. James Harden is probably more of an outlier than like Anthony Davis, he LeBron is. James, even Ru Russell Westbrook. Oh, he went to fucking UCLA to play hoops. 
in the peak of their powers. Yeah. 